so today we discuss about a very interesting topic that is on the cell cycle so what are the different phases of the cell cycle what are the role of each phases in the cell cycle how we analyze the dna content of a cell how we determine the length of the dna so first the cell cycle consist of may two phases one is interphase and another is m phase g1 s and g2 g1 s and g2 these three phase constitute interphase that is the preparation phase of mitosis or m phase so these three phase are preparation phase G1 gap phase 1 S phase replication phase G2 gap phase 2 so these are these three steps a very important phase because we get two daughter cell from a single cell we get two daughter cells from a single cell and so we need more organelles we need doubles organelle we need double amount of dna so these three phases g1 is g2 or interphase helps in the duplications of several organism sorry organelles several organelles dna and many other proteins and etc now what is what are the role of g1 phase in g1 phase cells grows the size of the cells increases in g1 phase and carries out normal metabolisms organelle duplicate so duplicate duplications of the organelle initiates in the g1 phase g1 phase is the longest phase phase of the cell cycle in comparison to other phases of the cell cycle so duplications of duplication of centriol centriol is a very uh, centriol play a very important role in metaphase anaphase because it helps in the formation of uh, spindle apparatus uh, through which kinet uh, through which chromosomes moves towards the equator region and ultimately reach to the each pole of the cell and ultimately daughter cell formed so centriole is a very important part of the cell cycle so duplications of the centriole start in g1 sorry the duplications of the centriole start at uh, end of the g2 and ultimately the uh, end of the duplications occur in the s phase or duplications end in s phase now what is the role of the s phase as we know dna replicate and chromosome duplication so chromosome duplication dna replications occur in s phase now next phase is g2 phase cell grows and prepare for mitosis here also cell grows increase in size and prepare it for mitosis because mitosis involve several type of protein this is very complex process there are several type of cyclin cdks several type of motor proteins are involved in the mitosis phase so this is very important phase of the cell cycle and say so preparations we have to prepare for the mitosis and g1 s g2 are the preparations fair for mitosis so g1 phase almost about 10 hour longest phase of the cell cycle 8 hour 5 hour near about 5 hour and 1 hour m phase so you can see that m phase is very consume a less amount time than the other phases of the cell cycle but several type several complex process occurs in m phase now we have to analyze we have to analyze the content of dna why we have to why we have to analyze the content of dna because suppose uh, you you are provided with uh, some samples of cells and we have to determine whether the cells are present in interphase m phase or in which phase cells belongs so we have to perform several experiment so here we discuss about a 
one type of experiment by which we can analyze the DNA content of a particular cell and determine whether these cells are present in G1, A, G2 or M phase. So, a flow cytometer also called a fluorescence activated reservoir sorter or fax. Flow cytometer also called as fluorescence activated cell sorter or fax. Okay, so we we analyze the, the analyze the fluorescence fluorescence by a flow cytometer technique. So first, there are several type of fluorescence dyes like propodium iodide. In case of pro propodium iodide, ethidium bromide. So there are several type of fluorescence dye that binds with the DNA. Fluorescence dye that binds with the DNA and 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 gives a fluorescence. So when these dyes binds with the DNA, they gives a fluorescence. And we analyze the amount of fluorescence, level of fluorescence, and determine whether the cell is present in G1, S, and G2. So fluorescence dyes like propodium iodide. Uh, ethidium bromide, ethidium bromide is an intercalating agent, propodium iodide, there are several types of fluorescent dye. So fluorescent dye dyes binds with the DNA and gives fluorescence. You have to understand this very easily and simply. Don't think, don't think uh, much about that. You have to understand it simply. So first fluorescent dyes, there are several types of fluorescent dye. What are the role of the fluorescent dye? So there are several types of fluorescent dyes. So fluorescent dyes like propodium iodine and ethane, ethidium bromide. So this fluorescent dyes binds with the DNA and gives fluorescence. Okay, Flu fluorescence dye bind with the DNA and gives fluorescence. So we have to analyze this fluorescence. By analyzing the fluorescence level, we can determine whether the cell present in G1 is G2 or M base. So, now the next point says about amount of fluorescence is proportional to the amount of DNA. Okay, so amount of fluorescence is directly proportional to the amount of DNA because if the DNA amount is high, the binding, the fluorescence, the amount of binding fluorescence is also becomes high. Now cell that show a low fluorescence has low amount of DNA and are in G1 phase. G1 phase contain less amount of DNA in comparison to other phases of the cell cycle. So cell that show low fluorescence has low amount of DNA. So this is G1 phase cell. This is these directions. Uh, denoted as relative amount of DNA and here number of cells number of cell increases here and amount of DNA relative amount of so as you can see from this graph this is G1 phase so G1 phase cells contain only this amount of DNA so this is the G1 phase so G1 phase cells contain less amount of DNA on the other hand G2 or M phase cells shows high fluorescence on the other hand G2 and M phase shows high fluorescence you can see that this is high fluorescence why because DNA replications ends in the early phases of the G2 and ultimately so a large amount of DNA find in G2 or M phase. So DNA the amount of DNA is very high in G2 and F in comparison with the G1 phase. And this is the intermediate fluorescence level. So S phase the cells which are present in S phase shows a intermediate fluorescence level because they contain intermediate amount of DNA. So this is the whole process as you can see that the G1 phase cells contain the number of the G1 
these directions is number of the cells so the number of the g1 phase cells is very high number of the g2 and m phase is low in comparison to g1 why here so there is suppose a culture of cells and the cells divide asynchronously so like you have to so there is suppose these are culture of cells and there are several types of cells like these these cells like these cells and like these cells so we when you analyze this there are several types of cells uh, analyze that which cells this is a culture of cells and you have to analyze the which cells are present in g1 which are present in g2 and which are present in g2m or s phase so <clears throat> you can determine by fluorescence the level of fluorescence uh, by a technique that is fluorocytometry technique so as you can see that when you analyze that there are a large number of cells shows less fluorescence less fluorescence less fluorescence and some there is very low amount of dna that shows a very high fluorescence these cells may be present in g2 or m phase so the amount of cells that are present in g1 is very high on the other hand the cells present in g1 or m phase is relatively low on the intermediate amount of cells is s phase so from these you can determine that because this uh, determine that because these these cells divide asynchronously and the cells which are present in g1 phase shows that the g1 the durations of the g1 phase is very high so the duration of g1 phase this is the durations of g1 phase is very high because more cells are present in g1 phase it takes more time to pass through the g1 phase that is why g1 takes about 10 hours on the other hand g2 and m both g2 and m both cons uh, the both takes about 6 hour so this is very this is very less in comparison to g1 phase so you can discriminate between the g1 phase and uh, which cells present in g1 phase and which are present in g2 and m phase so last point says that last point says here that the distributions of cell indicate that there are greater number of cell in g1 greater number of cells in g1 than in g2 plus m phase than in g2 plus m phase okay showing that g1 is longer g1 is longer because the cells cells takes more time to pass through the g1 than g2 plus m cell g2 plus m cell than g2 the cells that are present in g2 plus m cell g2 or m phase if you like the video please share with your friends thank you